Welcome back to Nightmare Castle, Dungeon Master. I trust your year out in Greece was not overly stressful. Hmm. What? Stressful? What does that? Oh. Well, it was most arduous at times. Yes. Trying to keep the retina adequately chilled is a vexing problem in that climate. I can tell you. Well, let me reassure you that here on the Scottish border, that will never be an issue. Hmm. Good. Anyway, back to the day-to-day grindstone of backstabbing and spitting in the face of prisoners.、Uh, I'm sorry, Dungeon Master. You can't stab someone in the back while you're spitting in their face.、Uh, you need to be standing in two places at. Folly, the... I've only just got in the door. Don't make me lose my will to live that quickly. Where's Sir Hordris? Sir Hordris? Yes, I'm sure you remember him, Bernard. Lots of white hair. Looks like he's had an electric shock at a goat herder's convention. Fond of dressing like a drag act tribute to the execution of Mary Queen of Scots. Yes, Dungeon Master, I have very clear recall of Sir Hordris. He was here only the day before yesterday. He's at the palace. What's he doing there? He's meeting one of the king's officials, a、uh, Miss Jane Burden Fortune.、Uh, there's some sort of inquiry thingy going on about changing courier services. As you know, all dungeons in the kingdom presently use DHL. Oh, don't remind me. They're utterly crap. I mean, terrible, complete shit. Oh, they're just awful, absolutely horrific.、Oh, utterly, Dungeon Master. <laughs> Even the Rugby World Cup becomes more boring when they sponsor it. So the King wishes to take soundings on alternatives. As the Hordris has put forward a proposal on establishing a centrally run Royal Mail service, so to speak, and Miss Burden Fortune is giving him a grilling on the subject. So、I、understand. Sir Hordris. You are a prominent administrator at Nightmare Castle, aren't you? Very prominent indeed. Very good. And so, sorry, may I call you Hordris? No. Very well. The problem for the king is that he was hoping to announce a new national courier service for all administrative duties by now, but he's been delayed by a shortage of viable suggestions. So I understand. He should have made a decision last Monday, but he put off the announcement until Wednesday. Before discussing it with his privy council on Thursday and Friday and Saturday through to the following Tuesday, that's right. And we still don't have a decision. No, indeed, most frustrating. In light of this, one took the measure of personally contacting the palace by shell phone on the Tuesday evening, in order to gain an insight into developments. Oh, did you? And what did the king say? Well, nothing really. There was the sound of breaking crockery, hysterical sobbing, and some female voice shrieking something on the lines of "Please, Baba, put the knife down! I'll do anything you say." But well, I hung up in the end. Call of duty and all that. Not much of an insight then. Most decidedly not. It is for precisely these reasons of obstructive causation that one has determined to attend in personam to assign to the royal agenda an innovative and far-reaching legislative proposal reconciling and superseding all prior alternatives that have been placed under magisterial analysis, and which, if implemented with appropriate exactitude and rigour, should facilitate any royal endeavours to progress the future efficiency of correspondence and freight transportation and expedition-related procedural structures. Good. And how would you like the matter of royal courier duties to change then? Well, one needs to make clear before one proceeds that decisions on the future of royal courier work is a strictly political matter. As in, first, foremost, and finally, it is and must remain the king's decision. One's prerogative is to make proposals, but not to advance or promote personal wishes. I see. Um. But I understand that you personally authorised the publicity campaign, quite an expensive one, over seven thousand sovereigns, arguing for the service to be fully centralised, with its headquarters being relocated to. Let me see. Yes, relocated to the Castle of Nightmare in Northumbria. Yes, is one to infer from that that simply because we paid seven thousand sovereigns campaigning for centralisation at Dunshelm, you believe that we must therefore be in favour of it? Well. 
Would you perhaps just as easily have paid 7,000 sovereigns campaigning against it? Absolutely. Or, if the whim had so taken us, we might have paid 14,000 sovereigns running two campaigns, arguing both for and against it. I see. And, uh, why didn't you do that? We judged such an enterprise to be a waste of public money. Ah, uh, yes, I see. Well, while not drawing any conclusions from your publicity campaign and speaking off the record, I take it you do personally wish the courier duties to be removed from DHL and taken up internally by Nightmare Castle? One desperately wishes for the services to be centralised, yes. The hindrance to the smooth flow of business of the border fortresses caused by the use of an outside courier has put us in an appalling position that few people in the South are aware of. Appalling position? But the border fortresses made a combined profit of 1.6 million sovereigns last year, didn't they? Yes. And even before taking into account the enormous budget allowance provided by the Crown, you've made a consistent annual increase in profit for the last nine years, haven't you? Yes. You've made profits without fail for 18 consecutive years, in fact. Yes. Your control of cross-border trade has made you the most successful customs base anywhere in Europe, for that matter. The most profitable customs base outside of Saladin's empire, yes. And so you see, don't you, that we can't go on like this. I'm really sorry, Sir Hordris. You rather lost me. You're profitable. Yes. You're successful. Yes. The border is pacified and makes a healthy extra source of revenue for the public purse. Now just let me stop you there. Somehow, and one is quite unsure as to how, you have stumbled upon precisely the point. Oh, thank you. Humility at all times, young lady. You only achieved your fleeting moment of astuteness due to one's profound intellectual influence. You must not take any credit for it. None taken. So could you perhaps clarify the point I have stumbled upon? The purpose of the border fortresses is not to make money, but to spend it. By using an outside courier and agreeing to one of their infernal fixed-rate contracts, agreed to under one of those diabolical special offers that force us to pay, ye gods, a rate well below the maximum price for their services, the border fortresses keep ending up with a growing surplus. You have a surplus and it's making problems for you. I'm trying very hard to understand this point. Please try harder. This is not the way our dungeons are supposed to work at all. It runs contrary to every principle that made civilization what it is today. In what sense? Think, woman. It presents an intolerable obstacle to our attempts to meet our targets. An obstacle? Making more money than you spend is an obstacle. But of course. Any organization has to have a relevant way of measuring its success. For instance, Bumptious measures the Dwarf Miner's Guild's successes by the size of its profits. Or more accurately, he measures its failures by the size of its losses. But in a non-commercial realm, our functions, and thus our priorities, are not to make profit from private money, but to spend public money. We are allocated, as you so redundantly pointed out, a budget by the king each year. For any government service, the bigger the budget, the better. By this reasoning, it should be clear to any mind, even yours, that the larger the budget a border fortress receives, the better the castle must have been performing. Uh... So any year we fail to spend all of the money in the castle coffers, our budget for the subsequent year is cut by the surplus amount. We end up with a reduced budget, and that makes it look like we are doing a bad job. This system is completely unfair. It gives a deeply distorted view of the very fine devotion to public service of my undermanned staff. Right, got it. And so, how would taking over the duties of DHL, utterly crap as they are, restore fairness? Well, what one would be forced to do is to employ tens of thousands of extra staff to take up all the private sector services formerly provided by the fecal DHL. That would immediately remove the castle's surplus, perhaps even generate a large and healthy deficit, which one can then cover by applying to the palace for a nice juicy budget increase. But wouldn't there be a danger if you provide all these services that DHL used to do, that you'd simply start profiting from them as well? Not at all. One would be forced to cut most of the services in order to fulfill one's obligation to one's shareholders to streamline the business on their behalf. You wouldn't want to get rid of these services yourself? Good heavens, no, certainly not. 
one would only take such a drastic step as a duty to one's shareholders. Whereas at the moment you don't have any shareholders because your duties are strictly in the public sector only. Precisely. Right. So wait a minute. Let me see if I can get this right. You want this private business to be centralised at Nightmare Castle, so you can be forced to spend lots of money that you don't need, and so you can have shareholders who will force you to cut lots of services that you want to keep. You see, with one's influence, even the meanest intelligence becomes shrewd and insightful. Thank you. And that's the real reason, is it? You want to have your hands tied? No, that is not the real reason. Of course not. It is merely the reason one will state to His Majesty. Ah, that's different. Quite. The real reason is that our courier service needs to be far more competitive. Competitive? Competing with what? <sighs> When dealing with third-rate minds, it seems one must explain everything. There is a substantial international market, and our couriers are facing a serious struggle for market space. Are they really? Yes, from the French and from the Holy Roman Empire. I am not entirely clear on how that works, Sir Hordris. Are you suggesting that a postman living in Dusseldorf, say, will go downstairs each morning, kiss his wife on the cheek, and tell her, "I won't be gone long, dear. I just have to go and do my postal round in case they're on sea." These foreigners will try any dirty trick, and it's not only the international competition. It isn't. I'm sorry to sound obtuse. Why perish the thought, young lady? But what else is there? Well, one doesn't wish to be a panic monger, of course, and this detail is very hush hush. Oh, I see. But it has crossed the minds of many an astute thinker, though hardly surprisingly not your own, that we may not be alone in the universe. Um. 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 So your concern is that our courier services may eventually be taken over by, uh, by. By alien life forms. If there exists the possibility of alien intelligence, there exists the equal possibility of an alien private sector postal service. Eh,、hey, really? Really, and we cannot know for certain, of course. But if they do exist, and they happen to pass through the vicinity of the planet Earth, there is every likelihood that they will identify this niche in the market. And what would that involve? A substantial loss of customer service. How? Well, the aliens would have to take all our mail off-world, ferrying it all the way across the galaxy, and get it sorted in their own sorting office on their home world of Flatulus Kappa. And so, of course, it would take a very long time for it to get back, even at warp factor nine. Even longer than DHL, though. Well, probably not. Now you mention it, but that is why one wishes to discard DHL. Our mail services need to be able to compete with alien life forms, and for that we need to be seen to be lean and mean and red. Don't you mean green? No, the aliens will be green, and one has had bad experiences with the colour green. We must be lean and mean and red. One has a high regard for red. So that's the real reason, is it? No, that isn't the real reason either. Oh. Is it not? No, it's just the reason I'm going to give to the xenophobes living in the dungeon. The real reason is that running a dungeon is a public service, and its entire salary structure is set down by the crown. Any money left over after the wages are handed out is given back to the king. But if one had control of a private firm like DHL, one would be able to choose one's own salary structure. And what benefit would that offer? My basic salary is set at five thousand sovereigns per year by the crown. If I ran DHL, not only could I award myself a larger salary, but I could also award myself a big bonus by tucking any surplus profits away in my own pockets. Instead, all I get is five thousand gold sovereigns. Have you ever tried to live on five thousand gold sovereigns a year? No, I can't say I've ever been so unfortunate. So the difference in salary is the real reason. Not exclusively. Would one be so petty and greedy as to decide a matter of public policy on the grounds of personal enrichment? One also feels compelled to look to the future. The future of the dungeon? No, my future. One has only five years to go before retirement, and one has a pension to think about. If I don't get a chance to take control of the courier service soon, I'll have to make do with a public sector pension only. 
Right, right. So to sum up, your real reasons for wanting the courier services centralised at Nightmare Castle are a mix of ruthlessness and pure greed. Is that right? Don't forget corruption. Sorry. Ruthlessness, greed and corruption. And you expect me to endorse your plan on that basis? Well, the King's birthday is coming up, and he tends to consult the nobility and the higher gentry on which of his subjects he should confer honours upon on these distinguished occasions. Oh, and changing the subject entirely, of course. Have you noted that one's name is prefixed with the appellation Sir? Yes, of course I... Oh, yes. You know, Sir Hauntress, I think your plan shows considerable merit. Yes. Yes, I think I shall recommend it to His Majesty. You shall? Why, that is most gratifying. Honest, impartial assessment of the available facts in the best traditions of British administration. Yes, Herman Sorcerer.